anyways, so uh, care chat metric normalization. One thing that you know maybe not everyone is as aware of, or depending on how much experience you have with running models or just overall machine learning. But a key thing when you do have like the the general concept of a predictive model or any sort of model is you get X features, like you know you get variables that you use to predict something else or used to accurately represent something else. So kind of I'll, I'll, I'll take a step back and say two general types of models are classification and regression. So classification would be someone builds a model to predict what pitch type it is. They have all these variables coming in and then the output is change up, fastball, slider, whatever. Uh, that's a classification. It's usually a non-continuous selection, right? Because you have, you're not going to have like half change up, half fastball. The model's got to predict one of X amount of pitch types. And obviously the number of pitch types you want to predict can be a constraint on a model, that kind of stuff. Regression is more continuous. So easy example, predicting predicting pitch velo, you can predict to be 90.1, 90.11, 90.111, 90 all that kind of stuff. Yeah. But in all those cases, there's multiple variables coming in that used to predict the output, the Y variable. So the input variables are the X variables and you, and they have their own, you know, they have their own coefficients or it, it all depends on what kind of like model you're building or what kind of like type of model it could be linear regression, logistic re regression, all that kind of stuff. And I won't go too nitty gritty on that kind of stuff, but just like a little bit of background on what I'm talking about for a lot of cases, you have to normalize the variables to get your top sort of accuracy. So what I mean by normalizing and normalizing is a term that a lot of people in the industry might like kind of scoff at because it's like too vague, right? People will say normalize, they'll say scale, they'll say standardize and all those things kind of mean different things. And, and all those things like should be used in different situations. So usually scale kind of refers to the range of all the values. So they might set everything from zero to one, say, Say you're doing a pitch velo model and your lowest velo is 70 and your highest velo is 100. And maybe you want to scale everything from zero to one. So zero, the 70 velo is actually zero. Uh, you know, 100 is one and then 85 is 0.5. Something like that. Uh, it doesn't change the shape, shape of the distribution. So if 70 is an outlier, if the second highest velo is, or second lowest velo is 84, then that's probably not the way you want to do it. But that's like, a way to kind of put everything on the same range. Uh, standardized usually means you want to have everything centered around the mean and the distribution is like taken into account because the standard deviation or the variance, depending on what kind of like standardization you're doing is usually a unit of one. So in my previous case, maybe okay. our average velo is 90. Our standard deviation is seven. So, you know, 90, a uh, pitch velo at 90 will be zero. A pitch VL on 97 will be one. Pitch, pitch VL between 90 and 97 is between zero and one. Yeah. Pitch VL a little bit lower than 90 will be, you know, under or a negative value. Yeah, I want to say and, my first introduction to normalization from like, a, uh, like an applied perspective was with uh, EMG signal and using like oh, yeah. a reference. Like you set up, you set up like a reference EMG signal and then you normalize like everything else recorded after that do that so that you can compare across like uh populations so you have like a common signal to to compare with yeah yeah and um that i mean that's that's normalization is extremely important in that case mm -hmm. like to the point where n almost like nothing useful would happen out of an emg signal if you didn't normalize it right uh you definitely couldn't like compare between people right right and the, but the thing is like that's like an obvious example but maybe like something like a lot of people don't really, uh, you know, keep in mind is normalization is like important for almost all examples, you know, it's like right. it's, it shouldn't be limited to just something like that. It should be only limited for to anything. Go ahead. Only for uh, between subject stuff or within subjects uh, comparisons and analysis. Uh, uh, as well. I, either or a lot of times, like, like what, when you're building, when you're building a model, especially if you're worried about like there being outliers on either range, like normalization is very, very important. And it's kind of a feature. It's almost like a, it's almost like a hack. Like you kind of want to build a model initially off like some intuition. You test out some hypotheses. You see what makes sense. But like once you normalize the variables and then 
have that, like you normalize the output as well, have everything on the same scale, that'll give you a much more accurate representation of how accurate a model really is. Because if you build it off a data set that might have an outlier or two, or might have an uneven distribution, then the moment you incorporate different types of data, that'll just have way worse res- results than what you're expecting. So, um, so yeah, so in this case, I, I kind of dropped a few ways to do it. And a lot of times for stuff like this, especially if you're like kind of getting into coding or whatever, or, or, or kind of like don't want to go through all the math yourself, there's a ton of built-in functions. I'm kind of looking now and I'm, I'm going to link this as well in the uh, description. I think there's a really good article that I was, I was using um, for Python specifically. It, uh, it's a scikit learn model. And if that it means nothing to you, then definitely check out the, the piece. But it goes through a few built-in functions that, that do exactly what I said. So one of the first ones is the min max scalar, which again, I was telling you to him at the range. It subtracts the minimum value in that variable and like that range of uh, features, or sorry, that range of data for that feature, and then divides by the range. So the range is a difference between the original maximum and minimum, kind of the example of Stony be between 70 and 100. Uh, doesn't reduce the importance of outliers. So if you do have outliers, this won't like accurately scale everything, or I mean, it might, it might scale everything, but it won't accurately like, standardize everything. But it does preserve the initial like shape. It doesn't like kind of like shift values around. Uh, then we have the robust scaler, which I actually think is pretty cool. And I've never used this myself. I, like I said, I stumbled on this article a couple of days ago when I was just like looking for a reference myself on one of the functions. And I think it's a kind of in-between feature, but it uh, changes that X variable by subtracting the median and then dividing by the inner quartile range, which is the 75th percentile value minus 25th percentile value. So, so go ahead. No, no, you go. Go ahead. You're so I'm saying answer my question. So, 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 so I'm I'm saying in this case, when there are outliers or where there are like you know large values that kind of hang out outside the normal bounds of the data, this would kind of reshift everything. It's not based on the mean. Uh, it's it's based on the median instead. It's based on inner quartile range. So if things are like really really clumped outside of it. It'll give you a better idea of just how clumped they are, right? Because most of the data should be in that 25th to 75th percentile. So dividing by that puts it on that scale. And then if you have like, you know, if all the values above the 75th percentile are wildly out of there, you'll really be able to tell. Um, picture, a, picture a box and whisker plot, if any of you yeah. guys are familiar. It's like ev- everything within the box would be uh, considered good example, a normalized good range. Good example. Yeah, that's good. And, and, and really easy to visualize too. We can maybe throw a, like a picture or something on the overlay or something. Um, and then like the more common, the more common method is the kind of standardization scale that I told you about where the means going to be zero. And then, you know, like a standard deviation, 60% of the variance is going to be, or 60% of the values are going to be between negative one and one, because you do have that whole distribution is like reshaped to proportionally fit, you know, most of between one and negative one to a negative two. And this, account a ton for outliers because everything's put on that kind of condensed scale and you can really tell what, what values are really out there. Yeah. Um, it does like distort like the relative distances be- between the actual values because, you know, if 90 and 70 are, a, are is a big range, but the variance is really oh, high, right. then, then, then I can get shifted. But like, it's a really good example, I think, of once you have a little bit of experience, mess around with your own, data set or running analyses, running regressions, running models, you can kind of really see the impact once you implement some regressions or sorry, some standardization, some scaling. Uh, a lot of times this is really helpful specifically for, especially if you have a regression you're trying to run and you have a relatively small sample size and you're not sure how psycho the distribution is for lack of a <laughs> lack of a more scientific term. <laughs> The very common, the very common uh, descriptor of psycho that applies to a lot of data science. So yeah, those, those are kind of like the, the main ones. Um, you know, the min max scalar won't distort the feature. You can use a robust one if you have outliers and want to re- reduce that influence. Uh, you can also remove outliers uh, as like a, as a you know, like uh, pre-filter it before the yeah, normalization. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and and then and then there's all you know without getting too too deep in it. There's different types of normalization. There's L two, L one where you kind of have like a unit variance. Um, you can get pretty deep into it, but the... 
What's up? The, the, the biggest, the biggest thing to take away is when you do run a model, the assumption, you, you shouldn't have the assumption that each of the feature variables or next variables have the same sort of relationship, you know, in their, in their distribution. And you should keep in mind to either apply some sort of scale or apply some sort of standardization. And honestly, if you, if you're, if you have a robust data set and aren't sure like what works or what doesn't work, just try it and then plot something like the errors. Like a, that, that's almost like the second level of error analysis. You plot the errors that show up from the model. Are those normally distributed? Would those benefit from a normalization? All that kind of stuff. So just like food for thought when people, you know, especially people that don't have too much experience, kind of mess around with stuff, try, try standardizing it, see how it looks. Yeah. That's, uh, also, that's- carrot chats.